And the final trial that we wanted to cover, we're actually going to make the subject of a special interview because uh, I think it, it's a trial that's been long awaited and it's a trial that deals really in, uh, with Huntington, aims to deal with Huntington's disease in a very fundamental way because it's aiming to treat the, the known cause of the problem, which is the Huntington's disease gene and the mutant protein. Um, I, wa I won't go into detail because I want the, the person we're going to interview to, uh, to go into it. The, the technique is known as Huntington lowering sometimes referred to as gene silencing, but we're kind of moving towards calling it Huntington lowering because it's slightly more precise. Um, she's my boss, so I'm going to keep completely silent. Yeah, right. If you can imagine such a thing. Uh, you may see my head explode or my ears bleeding <laughs> because I want to speak, but we'll try not to. So uh, please welcome my boss and Huntington's disease researcher from University College London, Professor Sarah Tabrizi. start by saying that no one can be your boss, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, You're thank unbossable, <laughs> but in, in a good way. <laughs> so thank you, Sarah. Uh, this is super cool news, um, but we, we haven't shared any details with the folks at home. So what is this trial, this first trial of Huntington lowering? What is it, what is it structured to do? So this is a first into human study of a molecule or a drug therapy that is looking to try and lower Huntington. And it's a DNA-like molecule that binds to the Huntington message and lowers then the Huntington protein. Okay, so we have, the, we have the Huntington gene that everyone has a mutated copy who will develop Huntington's disease. There's this intermediate message step, and then there's the Huntington protein, which we think is the bad guy. And this drug uh, blocks that middle step, the message. It does. Okay, and so what, what are the drugs called? What type of drugs are they? It's an antisense oligonucleotide. Antisense oligonucleotide. ASO. And the name of the drug is ASO Huntington RX. Snappy. Uh, so, uh, so one of the reasons we wanted to discuss with this with you is that unlike some of the other drugs that are being um, tested, which are more traditional kind of molecules you take as a pill, um, those of us who study these things know that ASOs, as these, um, these large DNA molecules, are a little more difficult to get where they need to be. So what's the plan for delivery? So this drug is going to be delivered via lumbar puncture. Okay. And so this is what we call intrathecal delivery. And so it's a, a, a lumbar puncture into the lower spinal cord. So that sounds like a big deal. Uh, is Actually, it... it's not into the lower spinal cord. It's into the lower lumbar, lumbar region. Just where there's fluid space. Where the space. lumbar spinal cord ends, where there's a fluid space. Yeah. Okay, so even if there's no spinal cord there, that still seems like kind of a big deal. Is this a routine procedure or is it something we should be worried about? So this is um, uh, very commonly used in oncology, in cancer therapy. So for over 20 years, they've been giving... Uh, via a lumbar puncture, um, what's it's called, intrathecal, delivery of agents to treat cancer. Okay. And so in oncology, intrathecal delivery is routine. And there are many years of established guidelines for intrathecal delivery of substances. It's also used commonly, and many of you who've had children have had an epidural and an epidural is a delivery of anesthetic into the lumbar region to numb the area. And so in anesthetics, in pain relief, and in many other neurological diseases, and in oncology, it's very common form of administration. So many years of experience with this form of administration. So childbirth or cancer or other diseases like that? <laughs> you are in so much trouble with your wife. I'm not the physician of the team, so I'm approximating. Uh, are, are treated, you know, acutely. You get a tumor, you try to get better, you have a baby, you stop, hopefully. Um, so, but what about Huntington's? This is a chronic disease. So are we going to have to get lumbar punctures every day? What's going to happen? It's a good question. So the way the ASO works is that it lasts for about four months. Mm. Its onset to lower Huntington is about four to six weeks, and then it lasts for about four months. And at the moment... The delivery is going to be every month. Mm. It's a single dose at monthly intervals, and it's just purely looking at safety. Mm. And uh, the interval at the moment is once per month, and it may be that that interval changes, but it's only a rare dosing, right, so or it's not, a, 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 not, not every day. 
So uh, you said this is a safety trial first and foremost. Um, obviously with something this experimental that's important, but what would be the next steps if, if this first trial is successful? So I want, and it's important to emphasize this, that this trial is about safety. Hmm. It's a first into human safety study and many different uh, steps are being taken to ensure that this is a very safe study and we're going to look at safety and tolerability. Mm. We're going to be looking at some potential measures or endpoints and uh, we know from animal model work that uh, switching, or switching off or lowering Huntington for a period of time is highly beneficial. And so if this study we show that this is safe and tolerated, then the next phase will be to go into what's called a phase two and then a phase three, which is to look at how effective this drug is at treating Huntington's disease. Right. And then when that, we know that, if that works, then in the future, and I, as in my uh, talk yesterday, in the future, if it reaches phase two and phase three, then it might be that we're able to then give it to people who carry the gene but who are completely well. To try to do disease prevention. But this is the beginning of a path along that way. And um, the study, Roche is partnering with ISIS to take it forward if it's promising and safe and tolerated to a phase two and a phase three. Yes, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Sarah, for joining us. Thank you.